Alright, hey guys, today we're doing episode 2 of my scripting tutorial series. If you haven't seen the last episode, be sure to see that, watch it, whatever, or else this probably won't make too much sense to you. Alright, we're also doing this live, like I said, so uh, right now we've got actually people watching, we've got 24 people. And uh, let's begin. Oops. Um, Alright, so last time I had the script. Um, I'm going to show you something. If you click on the script and you click disable, there you go. It's not going to run, and I'm going to disable the script we ran last time. Alright, so let's insert a new script, put it in workspace, and um, hold on, I'm going to just type this out and then I'll explain it after. Alright, so let's break this down. 4i means for everything about to be included um, equals 110, so start at the number 1 and then keep doing it until you reach 10. Do just means now run this. Um, P equals instance that new part. I already taught you guys about this last time, but a quick recap. Um, P is your tag. Let's put local in front. So you could just keep writing like P dot name equals to moving part so you don't have to retype this over and over um instance that new without these uh insert part you just got to put in a string of what you want so it'd be quotation whatever you want i'm doing a part quotation you could do a wedge part or a trust part um p dot brick color equals brick color dot new um i don't know bright blue P dot size equals vector three dot new uh, two one two. Alright, so what this means, P dot name equals moving part. I'll just click on base to show you. Uh, name is where is it? Right here. So base. I'm just gonna rename mine part moving part. For color, I already told you guys in the last one. Just a little quick recap. Uh, one of these colors, if you don't know the exact name, mouse over. This one's called toothpaste. But I'm doing this one, bright blue. Uh, p dot size equals vector three dot new. All right, so vector three. If you go into position, rotation, velocity, um, all of them have three values: x, y, and z. So x is two. It's going to be two long. Y is going to be one, one high, and two is going to be two wide or long. I don't know which one I mentioned last time. Either way, um, p dot c frame equals c frame dot new. Uh, math dot random negative 10 10 all right hold on I'm gonna show you guys something first actually all right so C frame dot new C frame means the exact location hold on P dot anchor equal true all right C frame means the exact position of the part and its rotation matrix so if I do print workspace dot base dot C frame we have the first three values, which is uh, no uh, position, it's at zero position. Then we've got the uh, corner relative matrix rotations, which is a little bit complex, but you don't need to learn about that yet. So the first three numbers are just the position, basically, except with C frame, you could put parts inside of each other, unlike position. And then I'm going to teach you guys something. All right, again, you could just put three values in here. All right, let's break this down. Um, print. All right, so I'm going to show you what this does. All right, it printed 10 random numbers between negative 10 and 10. Um, all right, hold on, I'm going to break this out so I can show you guys better. All right, math that random. If you just have this, you've got to put in two uh, number values. So you could put like 300. Or, no, let's just put like two. All right, so the first number's got to be lower than the second number. So the second number can be like eight. Now this will just pick a random number, one through eight. If you want to access this, you could do like local number equals, and then do print number. All right, there you go. Now it's just gonna print random number two through eight a whole bunch of times. There you go. All right, that's all awesome. Now we're gonna use this as a position. And it's just going to put these random parts. I should probably parent this. P dot parent equals workspace. All right, so now there's just going to be a whole cluster of random blocks. Where are they? Right here. 
Oh, wait, I should probably put them all up high. So 10 plus. All right, how this works is the Y position. All right, this is X, Y, and Z, just like up here with size. Um, it could be negative 10 or up to 10 forward. Um, it's going to start at 10 plus math.random. Uh, it'll subtract it by either negative 10 or a number up to 10. And then forward and backwards, it'll go, uh, or side to side, doesn't matter. It depends on how you look at it, I guess. Um, math that random, so it's just going to pick random number from negative 10 through 10. Alright, so here you go. We've got some random parts now. Alright, that looks pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to teach you guys the applications of it yet, because, uh, well, actually, there is no specific application. It could be used any way you want. But let's start with something else. For i equals 110 do print i. Alright, watch. Remember I said it's going to go from 1 and just keep making i add 1 until it gets to 10. See, it printed from 1 all the way up to 10, starting from the number 1. Now, if I put from i equals 210, or let's just say 410 so it's a little easier to see. See, it started from 4 and then went up to 10. Now we could use this to our advantage. Uh, let's just copy this right here. Make it easier on ourselves. Alright, if you guys don't know how I'm doing that green, green means the script's not going to run, so if you just cover this part up uh, in green, it's not going to run. It's just going to ignore it. Um, to make something green, you could highlight it and then press the minus key, and it toggles it. So, p dot c frame equals c frame dot new uh, zero let's make it uh, two high or one high so it's just above the base and then i times two and I'll show you what that's going to do oh we've got an error alright oh yeah I don't think I ever taught you guys about the output alright so output if there's an error in your script it's going to come out as red I'm going to say where the script at, so it says workspace.script, let's click that. The next number, 23, is the line, and here is uh, the C frame, and it attempted to call C frame, and, alright, I forgot to put dot new. Alright, there we go, that's it. Now it's going to create a nice little lineup, um, and then let's go from 1 through 10. There you go, so 10 bricks. Um, all right next to each other. It's pretty cool. Um, now I'm going to teach you guys about angles, but first I'm going to tell you why I multiplied i times 2. The parts are 2 by 2, so if I only used i, they'd be inside each other. See what I mean? It kind of glitches. It, yeah, it's got that weird glitch. Alright, so back to this. i times 2, then times c frame dot angles. Um, 0, now uh, let's do math.rad, 5, 0, 0, there we go. Alright, what does cframe.angles mean? If you have a default cframe and you want to do uh, a rotation, do times sign cframe.angles, not cframe.new, um, and then again you have three values, uh, x, y, and z, math.rad, um, it's pretty simple, that just means radians. 360 will be a full rotation, 90 is a quarter, uh, 180 is half, so 5 is just a little bit, so it'll look a little bit rugged. There you go. If I set it to 45, it'll look like it was sideways steps. There you go. Um, now I'm going to teach you guys about relativity. So if I go to um, local last part equal, uh, I don't know. Nail. So let's do uh, if last part is equal to nail, then all right, else. All right. So what is this going to do? If last part is equal to nail, last part is nil, so it's going to continue. Equal sign. You got to have two of them. Uh, that just means is equal to, or it is. Uh, nil, um, that just means nothing, I set it to nothing, I just put nil, you could put like 8 there, and if last part is equal to 8 then, and it'll run. 
Uh, so p.c frame, I'm just going to tab this over so it's easier. Uh, let's put this like this. Um, oops. Alright, let's just make a default part. Else, if p or if last part is not equal to nil, then. Oh, wait, first I'm going to set last part. Alright, so last part is equal to um, not nil. There you go. Oh, wait, let's not do is equal to. Alright, so now when it's going to come by and i is going to be 2, it's going to run all this, then come up to here, and last part is going to be equal to not nil. So instead, it's going to go down here to this else section. So p.c frame equal to last, hold on, actually I said that incorrectly, last part equal to p. What that means is the last part that it was on is equal to this. So p.c frame equals to last part.c frame uh, times c frame dot new one zero zero. All right, so I already told you guys how you do time c frame dot angles, but time c frame dot new means in relativity to the last c frame. So I'll show you. All right, that looks actually a little bit ugly. I forgot to add in the i. Um, i times two. So now it's going to go plus two from the last one. Oopsies, uh, what did we do here? We've got one skip. Let's see. What's that do to? Last part, uh, C frame to. Hmm, I don't know. Um, well, anyways, I'll just show you something else. So, hold on, where is it? Times C frame dot angles. I have that rad. Five. Oh, wait, no. Let's not do that. Uh, zero. Uh, math. Dot rad. Five. Zero. And now it's gonna look a little funny. It's just rotated a little bit, as you can see. Um, yeah. It's just rotated a little bit now. That's pretty cool. Uh, you guys could put like, uh, if you want to make it interesting, you could do like uh, i times 5. So now it's going to rotate more and more through each turn. Just a little bit, and then boom, it's at a 45 degree angle. Alright, so that might have been a little bit more complex for you guys. Um, actually, it probably was, but I tried to explain this the best I could. Uh, next episode, I'll try to do something a lot simpler. So, yeah, see you later.